Following the end of the Civil War, Chicago, Illinois stood as the gateway to the American West. Business and commerce boomed along the shores of Lake Michigan. The population tripled in less than a decade. And railroads connecting half a continent intersected in the heart of the city. The birth pangs of a metropolis were unmistakable. And as Chicago grew, so did the fortunes of anyone with a capital and vision to invest in its future. One of these men was Horatio Spafford. Well, Spafford, of course, came from New York State, and he came to Chicago and was well on his way. Of course, he was a lawyer, plus the fact that he was knowledgeable of real estate, had to do a lot of closings, I'm sure, and saw bargains when they were there and became involved in it. Though Spafford profited greatly from his investments in real estate, he considered material wealth as only a fragment of his true fortune. His reputation for integrity had earned him the respect of his peers throughout the city. In his wife Anna and their young children, he had a family he adored. And through his tireless support of both his church and the ministry of the evangelist Dwight L. Moody, he found tremendous spiritual fulfillment. Overwhelmed by this prosperity, Spafford frequently observed that he had been blessed beyond measure. Then, beginning in 1871, this life so rich in joy and contentment would be racked by an unbelievable succession of tragedies. That winter, Horatio and Anna's only son died of scarlet fever. Several months later, on the 8th of October, while the family still grieved their loss, disaster struck again. Within 24 hours, most of Chicago's downtown area and north side homes were destroyed. 300 people lost their lives, and 98,000 were left homeless. People were driven into the lake, and uh, many millions of dollars worth of damage occurred at that time. It virtually wiped out Horatio Spafford's real estate investments. So that was a, an extreme tragedy in his life. Yet despite his enormous personal losses, Spafford went to work after the fire, helping friends who had suffered even greater setbacks than his own. By the fall of 1873, the reconstruction of Chicago was still years from completion. Spafford's friend D.L. Moody had traveled to England to continue his ministry, and in November, Horatio decided to follow the evangelist overseas, hoping that a change of scenery and routine would lift the spirits of his family. He purchased six fares on the French Ocean liner Ville du Havre, one of the finest passenger vessels in the world. The day before the Spaffords were scheduled to leave Chicago, Horatio received word that he was needed immediately for urgent business meetings regarding property he had lost in the fire. Despite his obligations, Spafford insisted that his wife and daughters leave for England without him. He would join them there in a few weeks. On November 19, 1873, the Ville de Havre departed from New York. Four days into the voyage, the ship encountered heavy fog in the North Atlantic. Just past midnight on November 22nd, 
the Loch Erne, an iron-hulled English sailing vessel, ran the Ville de Havre broadside. The luxury liner sunk in less than 12 minutes. 226 passengers, including the Spafford's four daughters, perished at sea. An hour after the accident, Anna Spafford, barely alive and clinging to a piece of wreckage, was pulled from the icy waters. Several days later, her rescue ship reached Cardiff, Wales. She cabled her husband in Chicago with a two-word message. Saved alone. The loss of his infant son, devastating financial setback, and now the deaths of his four beloved daughters. Yet in the face of unimaginable pain, Spafford clung desperately to his faith in God, confiding to a friend that I am glad to trust the Lord when it will cost something. He immediately booked passage on a ship bound for England to join his bereaved wife. The journey was long, and Horatio spent the hours deep in prayer and contemplation. Four days into the crossing, the captain told Spafford, I believe we are passing over the spot where the Ville de Havre went down. As a grieving father gazed into the watery grave of his children, a torrent of emotion rushed from his broken heart. I'm sure he reminisced with Job. All the children were dead, they were gone. And as he said later, he went through some deeps he had never experienced in his life before. But he said through all of it, it seemed the darker it got, all of a sudden the light of God's promises began to shine in my heart. He said I couldn't do anything else but express it in a way that I had a gift for. I was not a poet by trade, but I loved to write poetry. And he said, uh, without even a moment's hesitation, the testimony began to flow from my heart through my pen. In that extraordinary moment, sorrow became hope, as Spafford, now strengthened by the assurance that he would one day be reunited with his children in heaven, returned to his cabin and penned one of the most profound expressions of faith ever recorded. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It's just a marvelous way he wrote it. You're on the sea with them, and we are out in the sea of life. This is what he's painting there, the picture. But for all the troubles, whatever you go through, and it says in this, whether it be financial or whether it be physical, but through it all, God will never leave you. He'll not forsake you, and you can say they can hurt the body, but my soul, it's well. <laughs> 